When you picture Saudi Arabia, you probably see endless sand under a blazing sun, stretching as far as the eye can see. The image of a vast golden desert is iconic and for good reason. That's not far from the truth. The landscape here is dominated by rolling dunes and shimmering heat, a place where the horizon seems to melt into the sky. The Arabian desert is one of the harshest places on earth, beautiful, but defined by scarcity. Life here has always been a struggle against the elements with little to offer in terms of comfort or abundance. And the most precious resource here isn't oil, it's water. In a land where rain is rare and rivers are almost non-existent, every drop counts. For centuries, survival depended on rare rainfall and scattered oases. Nomads and settlers alike built their lives around these precious water sources, always at the mercy of the desert's whims. Today, Saudi Arabia's booming cities and rapidly growing population have created an insatiable thirst. Modern life demands more water than ever before, putting immense pressure on natural resources. The country now leads the world in desalinated water production, turning seawater into fresh water on a massive scale. This technological feat has made life in the desert possible for millions, but this process leaves behind a toxic byproduct, brine, a super-concentrated saltwater waste that poses its own dangers. For every gallon of fresh water produced, there's a gallon of super salty waste. Managing this waste has become a major environmental challenge. Traditionally, this brine was dumped back into the sea, creating dead zones and threatening marine life along the coast. The consequences for the ecosystem have been severe. The kingdom faced a paradox, solving one crisis while creating another. The abundance of water came at a steep environmental cost. The question became urgent. What do you do with millions of gallons of toxic brine every day? The search for a sustainable solution grew more desperate. The answer, look not to the sea, but deep beneath the desert sands. Scientists and engineers began to explore new ways to manage this mounting problem. Thus began a gamble of epic proportions, as Saudi Arabia set out to reshape its future beneath the unforgiving desert sun. Burying saltwater underground wasn't a casual decision. It was a radical move born of necessity, forged in the heat of crisis. For years, Saudi engineers and scientists faced a mounting dilemma, how to deal with the ever-growing tide of salty waste from the nation's massive desalination plants. Pumping brine into the sea was killing marine life and threatening the Gulf's fragile ecosystem. The salty discharge was suffocating coral reefs, poisoning fish, and leaving a toxic legacy along the coastline. The government needed a new solution, fast. The stakes were not just environmental but economic and social. Millions depended on the sea for food and livelihoods. Deep beneath the desert lie vast, salty aquifers, layers of rock already filled with unusable water, sealed off from the precious freshwater reserves above. The idea, inject desalination brine into these deep, isolated aquifers, locking it away far from fresh water and ecosystems. It was a way to turn a problem into a potential asset. This wasn't just waste disposal, it was a strategic buffer, a calculated move to protect both the environment and the nation's future. In a region where water security is national security, storing brine underground could provide an emergency reserve if coastal plants were ever compromised. The desert's hidden depths became a vault for the nation's survival. The Deep Injection Well program was born, a shift from conquering the desert to partnering with it, harnessing its geology for a new kind of security. Engineers drilled some of the deepest wells in the region, not for oil, but for brine. Each well was a feat of engineering designed to withstand the harshest conditions. The world watched, skeptical. Could millions of gallons of toxic waste really vanish into the sand? Critics questioned the risks, but the urgency left little choice. The project required massive investment and cutting-edge technology. Every step was monitored, every risk calculated. It was a bold experiment, blending environmental necessity with national strategy and pushing the boundaries of what was possible in the world's harshest environment. For Saudi Arabia, it was a leap into the unknown, a gamble that could redefine the relationship between people and the land. The stakes were high, but the alternative, poisoning the sea, was unacceptable. The nation stood at a crossroads, forced to innovate or face irreversible damage. The desert, once an adversary, became the unlikely solution, a silent partner in the fight for survival and sustainability. The process is a logistical feat. At coastal desalination plants, fresh water is separated and the brine is collected. Instead of returning it to the sea, the brine travels through massive pipelines stretching hundreds of kilometers into the desert. These pipelines built to withstand pressure and corrosion deliver brine to remote injection sites. 
There, the brine is pumped thousands of feet underground into deep wells lined with steel and cement. The brine is injected under high pressure into porous rock, safely contained by layers of earth. Real-time sensors monitor the process around the clock. Every day, enough brine to fill hundreds of Olympic pools disappears beneath the sand. It's a silent, continuous operation, an engineering marvel hidden from view. The goal make toxic waste vanish, protecting both sea and city, but the scale and stakes are enormous. The project's ambition raised serious environmental concerns. Injecting fluids deep underground can trigger small earthquakes, an unsettling risk in a typically stable region. Scientists mapped faults and monitored seismic activity, but some risk remains. There's also the danger of brine migrating into freshwater aquifers over decades, potentially contaminating ancient water reserves. The construction itself scarred pristine desert, disrupting wildlife and fragile habitats. Despite efforts to minimize impact, the scale of the project left marks on the land. And there's the unknown. No one has ever injected this much brine for so long. Could chemical reactions underground create new contaminants? Could problems surface generations later? The project is a bold experiment, and its full consequences may not be known for decades. For local Bedouin communities, the project brought mixed feelings. Many elders, deeply connected to the land, worried about disturbing the desert's balance. Stories spread of restless camels and land that felt different near the new infrastructure. Some feared the Earth's secret tears, ancient water, would be poisoned. Yet the project also brought jobs, new roads, and access to markets and healthcare. Younger generations saw opportunity and progress, while elders clung to tradition. The project created a generational divide caution versus ambition. For officials, the goal was water security. For locals, the concerns were personal and immediate. Change came to communities that had been stable for centuries. The desert's people found themselves living atop a grand experiment. Only time would reveal its true impact on their way of life. Years into the project, scientists noticed something unexpected, something that would challenge their assumptions about the desert's limits and resilience. Near some of the brine injection sites, salt-tolerant desert plants began to thrive in places where nothing had grown for decades, or perhaps even centuries. At first, the team suspected leaks in the system, thinking that water must be escaping somewhere. But after thorough inspections, they confirmed the infrastructure was secure and functioning as designed. The real cause was more subtle and fascinating. The immense volume of injected brine was actually raising the water table in certain areas just enough to make a difference. This process displaced less salty water upward, creating pockets of moisture that deep-rooted plants could now access for the first time in years. Dormant seeds, buried and waiting for decades for the right conditions, suddenly began to sprout, transforming patches of sand into unexpected oases of green. The desert, it turned out, was hiding ancient potential, an ecosystem ready to awaken if given just a hint of water. This accidental desert greening sparked new ideas among the researchers. Could this process be managed to support wildlife grazing or even restore lost habitats? In one remarkable case, a grass species usually found only near the coast appeared deep in the desert, its seeds awakened by the subtle rise in subsurface moisture. The project, originally meant for waste disposal, was unexpectedly unlocking hidden life and revealing the desert's capacity for renewal. Scientists began to see opportunity where before there had only been a problem, reimagining the desert as a place of possibility. The desert's secrets, long buried beneath the sand, were being revealed one drop at a time, as each new discovery led to more questions and hope. The saltwater experiment, once just a solution for waste, was now turning the key to a greener, more vibrant future for the desert and beyond. Saudi Arabia's underground brine experiment is now a global case study. As water scarcity grows worldwide, more countries turn to desalination and face the same brine dilemma. Delegations from around the world visit Saudi Arabia to learn from its deep well program, but the solution isn't one size fits all. It depends on unique geology and careful planning. Attempting this elsewhere without proper conditions could be disastrous. The real lesson rigorous science, constant monitoring, and a commitment to safety are essential. The project also highlights the true cost of water. Desalination is energy intensive, and safe brine disposal adds to the price. As easy water sources vanish, the world must invest more to meet basic needs. The Saudi experiment is a reminder, every solution has a price, and every drop of water comes with consequences. There are no simple answers to water scarcity. The choices we make today shape the planet's future.
Saudi Arabia's saltwater experiment is a story of survival and ingenuity. Faced with impossible choices, the nation chose a bold, risky path, burying its problem deep beneath the sand. The project is a symbol of our age-solving problems we create, then managing the consequences. The desert's unexpected bloom reminds us that nature's response is never fully predictable. Even waste can have value, sparking ideas for mineral extraction or geothermal energy. The experiment encourages us to see opportunity in every challenge. As water scarcity grows, we'll need bold ideas and respect for the environment. The future depends on learning from these experiments, balancing innovation with caution. The story of salt and sand is a lesson in humility, risk, and hope. Our planet's future may be written beneath our feet in the choices we make today.